I had a bit of an epiphany the other day, which I made that video about, in which I realised that all this time, one of the biggest obstacles in my writing career has been myself, because I have had certain preconceived ideas about what's going to work and what's not going to work, and I burned so much energy and wasted so much time trying to bend myself within these non-existent confines. But all of that is over. So I'm sitting down here with a tabulous rasa, thinking, right, what's the plan? And you need a plan. That is why most self-published authors fail, because they don't have a plan. Do you hear that Harley Davidson outside? That's almost like a sign. So my biggest thing was, uh, I was going through a lot of imposter syndrome, I think, and creating that course that I made, which is I am now giving away for free, it was great because it kind of made me, it forced me to validate things about myself. I mean, at the end of the day, I have written 29 full-length novels. Oh, those are both the same ones. I have legitimately sold 6,000 66,448, I can't remember off the top of my head, but you know, nearly 67,000 copies. I have legitimately made more than $276,000 in royalty. All of these things that I've said about my writing career are true. And that is something to be really proud of, but also that is a hell of a foundation to build on. But I need a plan. That's what all writers need, is a plan. So I'm just making this video as a kind of like shoot the shit session where I just sit here and go on about this plan. Well, what is a plan? What do I want? And this is something that a lot of people don't realize. They have vague ideas about what they want, but you need specific ideas, because if you don't have a goalpost, you can't move towards the goalpost. So, you know, for me, I always used to say, oh, I want to be a writer, I want to do nothing but write and be able to support my family doing nothing but writing. And if that was the case, that's easy enough to achieve. Because if you turn your writing into like a, a factory process in which you, you know, distill down a successful book formula that doesn't take you that long to create and you create one and you create one and you create one and you follow the process of successful self-publishing that will happen you know it is entirely possible to make a successful living as a self-published writer however where most of us get screwed up is we don't follow that because we don't get into writing and storytelling because we want to produce a product we have something to say something that is meaningful to us I mean, every single book that I, I've done, like High Point, you know, that had a message behind it. The whole idea was this husband and wife arguing, and it's like, can you love somebody in spite of the bad things they do? Um, this book, No Way Out, this book is so deeply meaningful to me because I wrote it when I had uh, just started this awful job in Manhattan, regretting the decision, thinking, why did I take this job? I should have stuck with the writing, I should have stuck with the writing. Why did I take this job? And so I literally wrote a book called No Way Out about, you know, a hero and heroine having to, to challenge what they were doing. Uh, Queen Bee, this is one of the books I'm proudest of writing. It's, uh, it's ridiculous, it's 150,000 words long and it, it spans 15 years. But it was very much inspired by some of the women's saga books that I read from my mother's collection. And it was, it was really meaningful to me because it demonstrated the collapse of an established relationship and the beginnings of a new one. And it kind of distilled in my mind that you can write romance books about um, you know people meeting each other and falling in love. But sometimes you meet somebody and they're not the right person for you and your love story is with somebody in the future you haven't even met yet. And sometimes your love story can be with someone you've been married to for 20 years because you fall in love with them many times during the course of that life. So I'm really proud of all the books I've written and I think I should be. So now is the time to really focus on this. This is why I can't focus because I get calls all the time. Hello? Okay, that's fine, Susan. Okay. Yeah, never mind. Oh, uh, well, yeah, never mind. You say you're so strong, you're strong. Okay. Okay. 
That's one of the obstacles I have to face, is actually having enough undisturbed time to do anything. You know, it's a five minute video and I've already had one phone call interrupting it. But, I digress. Okay. All we need is a plan. So. I am a very privileged and lucky person because I have a 12 book MC series that is uh, reasonably successful and people seem to like. And yes, I have sold 66,648 copies of my books, but in the grand scheme of things, that is barely a drop in the ocean. I mean, um, in that course I put together, I worked out that, you know, probably around uh, three or four million Kindle Unlimited subscribers. And you can bet, imagine if my sales, 66,648 copies, you know, against the scale of, of four million people, that's barely a drop in the ocean. There are so many people who these books might appeal to that haven't even read them yet. So what I need to do is think very, very seriously about my advertising strategy. And this is where I always shot myself in the foot before. Because we have in Amazon this, this 90 day cliff thing, which is where you don't get paid your royalties until 60 days after the month's end. So if you spend money on advertising, and if it works for you, you won't get that money back for between 60 and 90 days. And obviously, Facebook want to get paid immediately. They want their, their cash right away. So you have to start developing a long-term strategy in terms of advertising about where your money is going to come from and when you expect to see a return on it. And this is kind of a daunting prospect to get your head around, but I am in a very, very lucky situation because I have a product, my 12 book motorcycle romance series that I know sells. And so I need to kickstart my advertising. Um, and to do that, I have been doing all these, these side hustles and things like that. I don't need to worry about that. What I do is wait until I get my next royalty check from Amazon and I just put that into advertising for the next month. And hopefully that advertising is gonna work and I've had about a 70% return on investment. So that means 60 days after the end of next month, I will see my 70% return on it, but that's fine. I will just put in what money I can for advertising for that month. The next month, put whatever money I can from advertising for that month. The next month, put whatever I can into advertising for that month. And then I will get all of the benefits, all of the, the royalties from three months earlier. And then I put that into advertising and it builds it all up. It's a slow, snowball-like process, but it can work if I begin it. And this is one of those stupid things where I'm like, if I had realized this six months ago and not wasted all of that time and effort trying to come up with my different, uh, different entrepreneurial things, I would have already had three months of starting to build on all of that. So there we go. I need to start advertising. Now, the other thing I've got uh, are the opportunities to sell my books another way. And one thing I've really, really, really been excited about the idea of is um, selling books uh, to people, like physical copies of my books. I never really felt like a real writer until I had physical copies of my books in my hand. And it is ridiculously uh, difficult to get your books into bookstores uh, because you know bookstores have a particular way they buy books they demand a certain amount of discount and things like that it makes it a pretty impossible process to get your uh, for a self-published author to get their books in brick and mortar bookstores through any practical means however there are other opportunities a lot of authors go to book fairs and book things and my idea is what if I went to all of those car shows that I love? I love going to the local little small town, New Jersey uh, cruise nights and car shows. They have one, Cops and Brothers, where you show your classic cars, you show your bikes, you walk around and talk to people. I love that. And those kind of people, they're just my kind of people. You know, they're firefighters and cops and, and blue collar guys who take real pride in their machines. And uh, I, I just love it. 
and that I think they're the kind of people who would dig my book. So why don't I look up fairs and, and car shows and stuff and maybe book a table and sell copies of my books because my books look pretty nice. So, you know, a smaller book retails for about, well, if you bought it at cost on Amazon, it would be $10. So if I sold them for $20, then I might sell a few copies. Don't know, but that's a good plan of action because I would enjoy doing that even if I didn't sell a bunch of books. Just going to a car, uh, one of those car shows or something and having a vendor's table and sitting down with, with all my books and maybe some rock music playing and just spending the day making conversation with people as they go through. That sounds like heaven. That sounds great. And if you, if you make some money doing it, and you get your name out there a bit more, that's fantastic. So, yeah, research shows to sell books. Now, that brings up a new challenge because I have paperback copies of a number of my books because now it's part of my process. When I publish a book, I will publish the paperback edition of it pretty much at the same time. However, that has not always been the case. And therefore, there are even in my biker series, uh, there are one, two, three, four books that I don't have paperbacks for. Um, so I need to put the paperbacks together and actually get them into a, a format in which I can print. Look, I've got an action point already. And that's kind of interesting. They're also doing hardback editions now. So it might be worth, you know, getting hardbacks done. So that's an action item. Okay, and that's that's really where we are looking at in terms of my my next uh, course of action with my romance book. Sorry, the dog's barking; it's distracting me. But this is nowhere near the full extent of the stuff I can do. Um, I'm really keen on this crazy idea I had of publishing versions of my romance books targeted towards male audience and so far I've, I've done two uh, so what I should do is go through on that process and publish uh, all of the books uh, that I wrote under Simone Scarlet that I really really liked that I think would appeal to men uh, in a way that would actually appeal to men and I'll do this thing this is going to be my shtick I have romance books that you know can be targeted towards two different audiences and maybe that will do something. If not, then if someone Googles my name and they go to Roland Tune on Amazon, at least they'll see the books that I've written. Because that's the problem when you write under a pen name is, you know, this is one of the things when I launched my course, people were like, I went to his page on Amazon, doesn't have much published, and it's fair point, fair point. Because all my books are written under a pen name, so I need to do something about that. So uh, I need to publish all my MC books as Roland Hume. And this then leads on to the other avenues in which you can make money. Audiobooks, huge thing at the moment, um, and a very, very big growing market. I need to look into making audiobooks of all my books. And I've kind of hesitated from doing that because it's not something, I don't want to lose any of the rights to my books. And I come from a radio background, so I, I want to be kind of like hands on and involved in the creation of these audiobooks. But because of that, I've kind of paralyzed myself and haven't taken any action towards actually making it happen. So that's something I need to do. Uh, and then, of course, you get into advertising of audiobooks. But audiobooks are another revenue stream. So even just off the back of, of everything that I've got here, if I start advertising my books, I'm going to start making money. If I continue to publish all my Motorcycle Club books under my own name, that's going to get my name out there a bit more. If I create audiobooks of these things, that is going to be another huge revenue stream. Um, so that's pretty exciting. What other stuff do I need to look into? Well, we've been going on about these shows and paperbacks and things. I'm a dick. I'm a douchebag uh, because I'm always promising people paperback copies of my books and I'm never delivering. So one thing I need to do right away is send out all of the paperbacks uh, to all of the people I have promised them to. They are long overdue. And I think if I don't do that, that's 
that reflects very poorly on me and that's not the kind of person I want to be. Um, <clears throat> I need to start thinking about writing more and writing again. Part of the problem of coming up with this course, coming up with these templates and all of this other stuff I've been doing is it's all been burning up time that I could focus on writing. And that's really where the core of any strategy should come from in terms of being a self-published author. Your best advertisement for your books is your next book. As a self-published author, you should always be writing, always be publishing, keeping that machine going. And if you are any good as an author, you will never run out of material. I mean, I've got three books ready to start in my head. I've got literally 10 other books with vague plotted outlines for. If I did nothing else and just continued writing, I would, could only hope that I live long enough to write all the books that are in my head. And I haven't been doing that for months because I've been kind of like disheartened about uh, everything. And I realized that I've got nothing to be disheartened about. So I need to decide what I'm gonna write. Now the logical choice would be a book that I know will be successful to make money and that is the latest book in my MC Romance series, which is going to be called Satin and Seal, and it's uh, it's going to start really heating things up in this like arc, story arc I've got going over several books. Uh, another one I've got is this spy romance called The Girl with the Golden Nose, and that's going to be one I write under my own name that I'm really excited about and I think could actually have legs. And then there's a book called Our Man from IT which is more of, um, it's actually kind of like inspired by all this Adventure Eddie stuff I used to do. And it's going to be about, uh, you know, a, a fictionalized version of some very, uh, very exciting events in my own life. Um, and that's going to be fun. And I have to look at these three and say, which one am I going to start first? And I think not knowing which book I should start first has been a huge obstacle to me because, um, you know, I'm like, I can't start Satin Seal because I should be starting this one and I can't start that one and should I be starting this one? So the answer to that is to pick one and get started. And then the way to be successful with this is to be accountable for actually writing these books. And the only way to do that is to carve out time every single day with which to write. Set yourself a goal of writing 2,000 words every single day. 2,000 words every single day, 60,000 word novel in a month. So I've wasted months and months not writing any of these books because I haven't decided which one to focus on. But in the course of three months, I could have written all three of them, theoretically. So I have to pick one of these books and get started on it. It's difficult then which one to don't know which one to go on with but um, yeah I've got stuff I need to get on with and it's kind of exciting and I think I could make things happen and what I love about it is that I don't need to worry about all of this entrepreneurial stuff yeah I have to start slow and I have to um, I have to build things up at a much much slower pace than I'd uh, anticipated and hoped for, but it will work. It will work. And in the meantime, I'm going to keep making these videos and I'm going to keep having my course available for free for everybody to, to look at. And, you know, maybe I can contribute uh, something to other people's writing journey by holding myself accountable to my own. So I'm nearly at 20 minutes, so I'm going to try and wrap this video up. But the first thing I am going to do is uh, restart my advertising. And I'm going to do that with a big promotion for my latest book, which has never really got a promotion before. The th second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start writing. I have to start writing one of these books. Uh, and I just have to pick one. And maybe I'll do something like on social media and ask people what they think. And the third thing is finish off these paperbacks and start looking into sending off the ones that I owe people and actually um, looking up shows in which I can sell them to real people. That's gonna be really exciting. Three things to get on with. And you know what? This is putting a, putting a destination in view because 
you'll notice I'm not really thinking about the end result. I'm not thinking about, oh, will I be a super successful author? Will I have tons of money? Will I be world famous? Will I be this generation's Ian Fleming? No, I'm just focusing on the process because it's going to be a rewarding process to see paperbacks in my books going to be a rewarding process to sell copies of my books to people that's going to be rewarding to start writing something new and share it with other people that's going to be rewarding the reward is in the journey and once you get to that point you start thinking hey I can't even lose this is fun I'm in a wonderful situation I'm a blessed person uh, anyway let's get started so I'm going to continue making these videos uh, keep in touch let me know about your own writing projects that you've got going on and I will speak to you soon.